I'm so excited for October because I will be shooting a cookbook. And so today I wanna to share with you four things that I've purchased in preparation for this shoot. What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon, welcome to my studio. This is where I do food photography. And the goal here is to improve your food photography skills so you can feel confident behind the camera. And like I mentioned, this October, I am shooting a cookbook. I'm shooting Phoenix Cooks from Figure One Publishing. It'll be coming out not this fall, but the following fall, so fall 2020. Uh, and I ended up on this project as a referral from my friend who is the author, Christina Brada. She is an incredible food writer here in Phoenix. We've been friends for many years, so I'm so excited to be working with her and the publishing team on this, uh, as well as my team. And so in preparation for this shoot, you know, we've been having all the conversations about what are we going for in terms of the aesthetic and the theme and what are all the dishes that we're shooting because here's sort of the setup as we've got 45 to 48 I can't remember exactly how many it's kind of a moving target but 45 plus chefs here in the Phoenix area who are sharing their signature dishes in recipe form and so we are capturing 45 of those dishes plus also shooting the headshots so I have got my plate full of work for the month of October uh, but as we're having the conversations with the creative team and with my team and with the chefs and the author we're really coming up with our vision for the cookbook and and so that has required me though to purchase some things that I didn't already have. Now, fortunately there is a good budget in place and I have a good sense of like how I'm allocating all the different funds that are associated with this project. Uh, but lucky for me, there was a good amount of money that I was able to apportion towards props. And I have been looking forward to adding some new props to my collection. You know, I've got a good solid base at this point, but this really helped me add some unique pieces that are also fortunately in my style because what was fun in working with the creative team is that as much as we're trying to fulfill their vision of what the cookbook will look like in terms of colors and textures and energy and aesthetic, uh, that a lot of that definitely falls in line with what my personal aesthetic is. So it's a win-win for everybody. So let me walk you through some of my favorites. So first of all, I've got this little guy right here. Um, he's from Mudform and I found them on Etsy, which Etsy is gonna be a really great place to find uh, different potters, ceramics makers, earthenware things like that and so the aesthetic of the cookbook we're definitely going for more earth tones organic sort of that authentic sort of handmade feel and so this definitely has that going on and I thought you know whether we have like a little appetizer in here or even maybe a soup so this will be a fun kind of piece to work with um, found these little wooden plates they definitely want to incorporate a lot of like warmth and character and sort of neutral woods into the shoot um, that's definitely a big part of our mood board for the shoot and so I found these little guys actually at the grocery store at my local Kroger grocery store they have kind of these little end caps where there's different home goods and so I saw these the other day it was only ten dollars for a stack of four of them so I was like I, I need those right now I'm so excited um, and they've got the really nice little matte surface on them now another fun set of plates and you're like Joni that is a basic white plate no it is not basic it is beautiful <laughs> some really great texture which I'm not sure if it's picking up here but this is from um, and I'm gonna butcher how to pronounce this but I'm gonna try Taliferro Taglifero. Um, they are this beautiful potter. I believe they're out of Oregon. It's all handmade. You can see even on the back, like I almost love the back just as much. You can kind of see that texture there. Um, but these are all hand thrown. There's some really beautiful imperfections in them. They've got sort of that wabi-sabi imperfect sort of vibe to them. I got this in the large set as, small, as well as the small set. Now I will tell you that these were not cheap. These are a little more pricey, but to me, these are some really great basics to have for your collection especially if you're going to be doing kind of that organic sort of feel that you want those organic sort of edges that it's not like a perfect white plate and two it's again matte uh, which was an important consideration for the cookbook now here's another one if any of you have been watching me over on Instagram and actually in the video I did a couple weeks ago about shooting for the blog um, I recently added these plates by KJ Pottery I totally love these um, the texture and the color and I actually bought a whole bunch more so those are on the way they have not arrived yet the thing with some of these custom um, and unique you know hand done pieces is that they will take a while so like for this shoot we're shooting in October so I made sure to place these orders back 
back, you know, within four to six weeks of the shoot, because it will take generally four to six weeks to turn around some of these custom pieces like this. Now this one, I actually got two of the salad plates and two of the dinner plates, and this is from World Market. So I did go a little bonkers at World Market. Again, we've got the mat going on, but what I really liked around this is we've got this nice little gray detail around the edge, um, which depending on a particular dish might just really help to add something unique and interesting. Because sometimes a basic round white plate, it's kind of meh, but that little gray line to me, um, and it was definitely within the color palette and the aesthetic of what we're going for for the shoot. So a uh, very great little find. And again, much more cost effective. This was a $7 plate. Um, I imagine that the dinner plates were maybe 12 to 13. So much more cost effective. So you can see there's like a definite balance of the more pricey, you know, handmade pottery, as well as then just the cheap and easy kind of stuff you can find at the big box stores. All right, here we've got another one. I cannot wait to shoot with this one. I have not shot with this yet. Um, I mean, just look at this gorgeous color and the texture. Again, we've got that matte thing going on. This one is by Notary Ceramics out of Portland, Oregon. Seems like there's a lot of great pottery coming out of Oregon. Maybe we need to do like an Oregon extravaganza trip where we go to all these really great ceramics places. Um, but I actually came across these guys on Instagram. So Instagram, of course, being a wonderful place where uh, people who do be beautiful handmade work like this are sharing their work as well. So, you know, you just end up on the rabbit trail of ceramics makers and then all of a sudden you find this in your, you know, shopping cart and you've got this beautiful piece. So, um, again, not an inexpensive selection, but to me, such an important piece uh, for this particular shoot because it's definitely in line with the aesthetic. Uh, and I think the publisher is really going to enjoy this. And I actually got this also. Oh, they've got it in a different textures, different color and glaze as well. So we've got the lighter glaze. And what I love, I mean, you got these little details. I'll do a close up of this. Uh, you got these little details around the edges where it's just kind of like these drips and imperfections, which I just know when we get the food on that plate, it's just gonna make the food sing. Now in looking at the shot list and sort of assessing the props that I have and that my prop stylist has and my assistant has, you know, we kind of all put our collections together. So, okay, what do we not have? The one thing I didn't have a lot of was serveware. I mean, we've got, cause they want to do a lot of shots that are going to be served family style. And so I thought, okay, we have, you know, a good number of platters and larger plates and things that we can serve things family style, but I don't have like good tongs or spoons or serving spoons, things like that, uh, that would really work well. Because one of the things is anytime you maybe start to, you know, you serve a salad in a big bowl or something family style and you throw the tongs in there or you throw, you know, the serving spoons in there and they look gigantic. So I was kind of on a quest for smaller serveware, which that sounds super random, but I did find some really great pieces such as these guys right here. Um, found these on eBay. So eBay's going to be good for some vintage finds, some one-of-a-kind finds. Um, these are just some little stainless steel, but they were nice and small um, in comparison to, you know, definitely you see some serveware and you're like, that is huge. And we don't want to overwhelm the food. Of course, we want the food to be the focal point. So, and these also have sort of this mid-century modern vibe, which is in fitting with the Phoenix architecture. And again, the aesthetic that we're going for in the cookbook. Also found this little server guy. I just love that he's nice and short. Again, another eBay find. I find that I find my best silverware, serveware, things like that on eBay. You get some really unique inexpensive things. I want to say this was maybe like $15. Um, so really nice short handle. We've got sort of a vintage vibe going on with this. So we'll have a little mix of the modern and vintage, but really like that guy. And then I also, this was like the best find ever. So uh, there was a full set. Well, it wasn't a full set. It was missing some pieces, uh, but this silverware, and it's got this beautiful art deco detail on the bottom of the fork, which something that's significant to Phoenix is Frank Lloyd Wright. Like he was a big architect. He's done a lot of work here. And so that Frank Lloyd Wright sort of modern art deco feel is very relevant to Phoenix. And so I also love though too, look how short these forks are. Again, we have a problem sometimes when we put silverware in a scene and it looks gigantic <laughs> in relation to the food. So, you know, I've got the regular, you know, dinner forks, but the salad forks are really nice and short, which just totally made my day. So there's another eBay find. Sorry guys, there's only one out there and I already got it. So, but Go check out eBay, see what you can find there. 
And then I also added some new knives to the collection. How great are these, right? You've probably seen these exact knives all over Instagram. A lot of people have these knives. They're these French antique style knives. And I have to give a big shout out to my friend Rachel Richards over at Salty Tooth Blog, Rachel Richards Photography. She came across these because we were talking about how, you know, we needed to add more knives to our collections. And so uh, she went on a knife bonanza and I likewise got kind of these two good basics from Fly and fork.com. I will link them below. They've got a great selection. They've also got some fun linens. So beware, you might get in trouble over there going crazy buying props, but uh, really excited about these two additions. I think they'll go with a lot of different scenes. So those are the props. It's not all the props. I bought a lot of props, but th those are definitely the favorites. Those are the highlights. And so now the other thing that I wanted to make sure to have, so I've got the props. Number two thing then was to have some new surfaces. Uh, so I've got a solid surface collection, a lot of really great pieces. But again, in talking with the art director and the vision for this shoot, there were some definite surfaces that I was lacking. And in one in particular was that the art director wants a terracotta background because that's again relevant to Phoenix. There's a lot of terracotta in terms of you know tile roofs and terracotta and decor and floor tiles and things like that. So I thought you know do I go buy an actual terracotta tile which those first of all are kind of fragile but they're also not super large and I thought if I want a whole entire surface I need something larger and so I was like you know what we, we're gonna go back to that DIY backdrops video. If you've missed it it's right up over here and I'm gonna do a DIY. So I went and got some plywood, got my joint compound, got some Martha Stewart terracotta matte colored paint and that's all so it was super duper simple and you can see right here here is the final product and I sent this surface uh, sent a sample picture of it to the art director and she was like yes that's exactly what I was looking for it's perfect I was like yes so just you know again nice little and it's not even that huge but it's gonna be large enough for what we're working with I believe this is a two by two um, you know larger is always better but I had a two by two already in the studio you can see actually oh this was a custom for uh that i did for coaches oats last year so you know i just painted the other side of it but what i did was i applied the joint compound really thin on the surface so that it's not like there's a ton of texture there you can see there's just some little like bubble marks there's some little parts where it's a little streaky it's imperfect um, it looks organic but it's not super textured because that was something that was important again to the art director she wanted it to be a little bit more minimalistic uh, and then all I did is waited for that to dry and then I painted over it with that terracotta paint um, and then that was pretty much it I did end up needing to do two coats because it just needed to build up a little bit more because I could see kind of the white sort of peeking through underneath but I got two coats on top of that and now what I'm gonna do because I really want that super matte vibe I'm actually not gonna seal this one because this is really for the most part only gonna be used for this shoot uh, and if we do spill anything on it I'll just put the bowl over it or the napkin over it things like that so I'm not worried about long-term use for this piece now if after the shoot and I really like shooting with it and it's something I want to keep and continue to use then I will go ahead and do another coat of paint just to paint over any sort of you know drips or blops or anything Thing I need to fix and then I will seal it at that point with that matte sealant but even the matte sealant it does cause a little bit of sheen and shine there so I just wanted to keep it super matte for the shoot um, but super duper easy solution and again thumbs up from the art director so I'm a happy camper so now along the same lines of the backdrops, I also needed some really large backdrops for shooting the chef portraits. Uh, because again, this cookbook, we are going through 45 different local chef's dishes. And with each of those dishes, then we also need a headshot. So as far as the flow of the shoot goes, the chef's gonna come in, they'll prepare the dish, put it together, we'll shoot the food. And then from there, I'll pull them over and shoot a headshot of them. But not just all just headshots. Like we want some that are a little more zoomed out, a little further back and so I needed some larger backdrops in order to accomplish that because my backdrops for the most part are all geared toward food so that's pretty small so what I did is I hopped online did a little research to find out what are portrait photographers using for backdrops and found quite a few people recommending Denny manufacturing they've got a great selection of different sizes different kinds of materials backdrops uh, and so I ended up purchasing this particular one it's got kind of this gray sort of vibe to 
to it. I think it was called Asphalt. I'll be sure to link the specific one down below. But uh, the art director and the creative team over at the publisher wanted something that was a little bit more a light gray in the background. Now certainly I'll play with the lighting in order to really achieve like in terms of the tone of that gray, how dark or light is that gonna be? But to me, this was a really great sort of midpoint, a good neutral, and uh, it was also really nice and large. So I went with the eight foot by 10 foot. So eight foot high, 10 foot wide, because there are gonna be a certain number of shots where there are gonna be multiple people in this shoot, you know, up to two or three. Most of them are gonna be single headshots, portraits, uh, but we just wanted to make sure that there was enough space that if I do have multiple people that I've got enough background to cover them. And two, just so that we're not shooting everything like this, that we can get some shots that are a little more zoomed out, um, you know, sitting at a table or prepping something that we can have a little bit more fun and variety and so that the images aren't like the same exact image, just a different person uh, that we want to kind of spice it up and keep it exciting. So definitely this backdrop is plenty large. I feel good about that, but it did show up with some wrinkles. This is the wrinkle free material. Um, so at this point, I'm going to follow their recommendation to wash it and dry it um, in the washer and dryer and see if that takes out these like main creases that it arrived with. Um, fingers crossed. I'm hoping that's the case. I'll definitely keep you posted after we do the shoot. I will do a video just to kind of recap like what happened, what went on. I'll possibly pull the author in too to get some of her insight um, as somebody who will also be very intimately involved in the shoot process. So stay tuned for that video. I'll be sure to update you <laughs> on how this backdrop works out. And then the fourth thing that I bought was more for me, as well as my friend Rachel, who's gonna be assisting me at the shoot. This is more for our sanity. The publisher did not require this. Nobody will even know that this is like on set or a thing, uh, but very important because we're gonna be shooting very long days. Like we have six days nonstop shooting going on is that I don't wanna be dealing with swapping batteries in and out of the camera and God bless Rachel, she doesn't either. So what I did is I got the case relay from Tether Tools, which just plugs straight into your battery slot and it plugs into AC power or to an external battery pack and it just keeps pumping that power all day long so that we can shoot for eight, 10 hours and not have to touch the battery slot, which thank you Tether Tools for solving that problem for us. I am so excited to get that here. So obviously this shoot is gonna require a lot of time and my creativity. And so for that reason, I won't be publishing any new videos here on YouTube in the month of October. I gotta stay focused. We also have a family trip planned to Yosemite after it's all done and over with. So take some time to, you know, reconnect and engage with my family, but I'll be back in November and be sure to give you some recaps, some updates, let you know how the shoot went, do some interviews, share with you some of the behind the scenes. Uh, but certainly in the meantime, I will continue to update things over on Instagram. So be sure if you're not already following me, follow me at the bite shot uh, and feel free to tag me with what you're working on so I can give you that thumbs up. But with that, I hope you stay out of trouble. I'll see you in November. <laughs> You take care, okay? Bye.